Great. Um, basically, what I'm going to show today is uh, a very common workflow in, the, in what I do and in the automotive industry. And basically, what I'm going to start with is an existing model. And I'm going to do a facelift on the hood. Um, I'm going to show, since it's so easy to do, I'm going to show two variations on this. The first one um, is kind of a pro street hood with a big kind of snorkel intake uh, that you'd see the drag strip. And then the second would be a more tuner style uh, hood that would be common, something that you'd see at the SEMA show or something like that. So um, let's go ahead and get started. Um, the first thing I'm going to do is, is take my model and I'm going to extract the hood, the area that I'm going to be working on. And in this case, I've got, uh, I've got a, uh, a boundary curve set up so that I can trim the, the final product of what I'm going to be modifying. So I'm going to hide everything else. Um, I'm going to extract one piece of the hood because the symmetry tools and T-splines make it very easy to get symmetrical objects. And I'm going to keep just my boundary curve and just half of my hood. The first thing that I want to do for a successful conversion is to rebuild my surface so that it has a uniform number of, of control points. And I'm going to just do that using the Rhino rebuild command. And then the next thing I'm going to do is using the T-splines convert to T-splines command. I'm going to click here, hit enter, and you'll see that it untrims my surface based on what the original nerve surface was built to and has a nice even topology based on the Rhino rebuild. I'm going to bring up the control, the, head, the heads up control panel within T-splines by hitting the control and space bar. And along the way, I'm going to try and, and give some insight into some little tips and tricks and hotkeys and stuff like that. So um, anything, anything like that uh, would be worth taking notes on. Um, so in this, in this mode, you see uh, the reflections are very smooth because I'm in smooth mode. I'm going to hit the tab key with the heads up display enabled. And you'll notice not a dramatic change, but you'll notice that there's some facets that have appeared because I'm now in box mode. Basically what this is is a, is a polygonal um, representation of the T-splines, the underlying structure of the T-spline surface. So the first thing I'm going to do is um, I'm going to hit the D key, which changed my heads up display selection mode to faces. And you'll notice as I hover over the surface faces highlight. I'm going to pick a couple of these and I'm going to delete them just using the delete key in order to create a hole. Um, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go to edge selection mode by hitting the S key. Um, you'll notice now as I hover over, I'm picking just the highlights. So I'm going to select the edges of my hole and then using just a couple of tools, this one being the extrude, I'm going to just quickly pull the base of the intake uh, straight up using the manipulator. I'm going to invoke the extrude command again by just right clicking and instead of translating this time I'm going to change my manipulator to scale by hitting the R key. Now first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to scale it in the Y to go straight out and then I'm going to scale it in the X and you'll notice when I do this, <clears throat> the control points on the edges start to skew a little bit and they're not laying right down the center line. I'm not terribly concerned about that right now. My basis, the basic thing that I'm trying to accomplish is just roughing out the shape. I can always go back at another point and, and adjust the, the center line vertices in order to get my symmetry. I'm going to right click again since I've, I haven't exited the extrude command. Notice my manipulator goes back to the translate by default, which works great because I can just stretch this up. And then I'm going to select just these two edges. I'm going to right click again because I haven't exited extrude and I'm going to extrude this over. Again, I'm not paying a whole lot of attention to what's going on with the center line because I can fix that at a later date. Now, there is some discontinuity here in the corners if you notice my edges aren't lining up. So to fix that, I'm going to go to the weld points command, select the two points, and they'll snap together. 
So in order to create the front of my box, I'm going to go back to the face command, or the face selection mode. I'm going to select the front face. I'm going to just hit the delete key. I'm going to go back to my extrude. I'm going to select edges using the S key. And I'm going to hit the R key, which brings up the translator, the scale translator. Oops, have to hit the extrude command first. Extrude, scale, and I'm just going to extrude and scale at the same time, which will give me um, the front face as my intake. Now, I want a little bit more control over what happens on the transition as the nose of this intake rolls in, so I'm going to extrude again. Again, hit the R key to bring up the, the scale translator. And I'm going to give myself just another row of control points in there. I'm going to right click again, which brings, <clears throat> brings me back to the translate. Now see, I've, I haven't exited the extrude command, so as long as I haven't exited the extrude command, all I have to do to get more extrusions is right click. So I'm going to use the translator to adjust this a little bit. I'm going to pick just this edge because I'm still in edge selection command. Again, right click again because I'm still in extrude and I'm going to bring this out. And again, I'm just eyeballing. It doesn't really matter how close I get because I'm going to adjust this along the way. I'm going to weld points like I did before to make sure that the edges of this box are all knitted up. And I'm going to hit the the tab key, which is the hot key for translating from box mode to smooth mode, to see how I'm doing. And you'll notice that I get a very nice, smooth intake surface, and you can start to see how the shape is developing. You'll notice that that extra extrusion that I threw in the front there, instead of just doing one and going back into the intake, gives me a, a, roll, of control, a roll of control points right around the front of this. Now, I've got some symmetry issue, issues here, so I'm going to go ahead and straighten that out. I'm going to hit the tab key again to go back to box mode. I'm going to select the vertices of all of this and make sure that I'm just getting the vertices. I have handles enabled, so I want to pick just the vertices and not the handles. select all of this. And then a great trick Matt showed me yesterday was if you hover over the command line, it disables the T-splines hotkeys and allows you to enter Rhino commands. So at this point, I'm going to type in this, the Rhino set point command, which is set PT. I'm going to do it only in the Y, and I'm going to snap points to the center line. We love that command. Let's check it again by going to the tab key. We should be set up right straight down the center line now. At this point, I can invoke the, the T-spline symmetry command. I have Y symmetry picked. X and Z turned off. Uh, weld to yes. Invoke that. And we get a, fan, a nice symmetrical hood. If I throw a zebra stripe analysis on this, again, I'm going to put my cursor over the command line so I can enter Rhino commands. And gods of live demo have shined brightly upon me, and we get a beautiful curvature continuous surface. So let's tune this up a little bit. <clears throat> I'm not wild about how this transition on the back is happening. I'd like this to blend a little smoother. So I'm going to go back into box mode by hitting the tab, the tab key. I'm going to go into edge selection mode. I'm going to grab this edge. I'm going to pull it out a little bit. I'm going to hit the R key to scale it, to soften that a little bit. I'm going to grab edge here, 
hit the W key to get to my translator. And I'm going to bring the front of this up a little bit. And I think I want to scale the back of this a little bit, so I'm going to, again, hit the R key. Um, I'd like to scale it from the bottom of this, so I'm going to hit the T key, which re repositions the translator. I'm going to snap it to this point and then bring the back of this down a little bit. I may do the same thing here. Again, hitting the T key to reposition the manipulator. And I don't want to belabor this too much, but the designer dork in me has to uh, indulge a little. So, all right, let's go back to bot. Let's go back to smooth mode and take a look at what we have. So we have a much nicer transition back here, much more scooptastic. And you can experiment at will with what type of shapes that you get. So one of the beauties of T-splines is the, the sculptural freedom that you have to be able to try things. And coupled with the high quality uh, Rhino display, you can really see what's going on in real time and make decisions where you're actually designing in 3D, not just interpreting a sketch and hoping for the best. So at the risk of noodling this too much, I'm going to just pull out a few more things, and then we'll go on to the next mode. So you can see I think we're about six or seven minutes in, and we have a beautiful curvature continuous scoop that was pulled out very simply using just a few tools. The beauty of this is if I go back to my, my T-splines menu, there's a convert to Rhino nerves or polysurface. I love this button because you push it and you go ping, and you get a beautiful nerve surface that maintains all the continuity that you had in T-splines. If I hit the control and space bar, I'm going to hide the heads up display for right now because I'm going to use the Rhino commands. I'm going to pick my original border surface and trim. Bring back my original model. And you'll note, let me hide the original hood here for a second. And you'll note that if all has gone well, I should be able to join this using the Rhino join command. Bring up my naked edges. And you'll note that all the edges along the original hood laid right back where they're supposed to. Now, there may be a little bit of change in the cowl back here because I did mess with the topology back here, but the thing that I'm most concerned about was lining up the edges so that it blends back into the original hood. So let me unjoin that. I'm going to delete this, bring up my next bring up my previous hood I'm going to extract this edge I'm going to mirror it I'm going to hide the original pieces and we'll go into the next one which is a cowl induction hood now this one is a little bit more complicated as far as the construction and I'm going to show a common trap that you fall into when you're making this kind of stuff and how to recover from that. So first thing I'm going to do is go into the Rhino Rebuild command. I'm going to select the surface. 8 by 8 seems to work nicely for this, so I'm going to go ahead and rebuild that. Convert to T-splines, which will untrim. I have my boundary curve as a reference. Bring up my heads up display with the control space key. And I'm going to hit the tab key to go into box mode. Again, notice the faceting that shows up. I'm going to select some faces again to make a hole. And then I need to split these faces up a little bit, again, using localized control in order to get the shape that I want. So I'm going to go to the T-splines the insert point command. And I'm going to split these kind of on an angular basis through there. 
So what that does is that splits these and allows me to manipulate these surfaces individually. I'm going to select the edges of this. Actually, I'm going to split this one up here too because I want a little bit more control there. So I'm going to split this here to here. I'm going to grab these edges and hit the W key, which brings up my translation manipulator. And I'm going to drag these up. And you can see the basis of this intake already starting to happen. And again, the, the power of this tool, it allows you to, to really just kind of play with the shape until you're happy with it. So I'm not going to get too hung up over laying out this topology just yet. So I've got a hole busted in this thing. And hit the tab key, you can see that it's already starting to take shape, but there's some topology issues that we're going to address here. Edge selection mode, I'm going to go to extrude, and I'm going to just start filling this hole. I'm going to eyeball this to be approximately lined up with my first point here. Right click to extrude again. And again, I'm going to approximate, line up with the head of this, with the opening of this scoop. I'm going to extrude one more time to form the bottom of the air box. Right click again to extrude using the manipulator again to come straight up. Right click again, drag this forward. Right click again, drag this up. And I've got the basis of the opening for my scoop. Like we did on the other one, I'm going to grab the weld points command. I'm going to just select those and I'm going to stick these together. And I'm going to use the bridge command, which is new in 2.2. I'm going to steal a little bit of Matt's thunder here because this tool is so cool. And I'm going to click the two edges. I'm going to straighten out my direction and I'm going to just bridge between those. So, here's where the trap comes in. If you notice, if I were to just bridge these up, oops, I start getting some triangular surfaces, which is not an awful thing, but it's not what you want. And if you notice, if I switched tab mode, if I hit the tab key, you notice that I'm not getting the type of smooth transition that I would like because first of all this edge is not joined up. So let's fix that. <clears throat> I'm going to go into face selection mode. I'm going to select these two and I'm going to actually let's get rid of all of these. I'm going to delete all of these. And then I'm going to evaluate the shape of my hole. So I've got a surface here that I'm going to want to translate down into this. I've got a surface here that somehow has to get down here. And then I've got the edge of a surface here that's doing something funky. So let's fix that first. I'm going to insert a point here and here and break that up into a logical flow. Then I'm going to go back to my extrude command. I'm going to pick these two edges. I'm going to build, bring a little, bring an extrude out here. And again, I'm not terribly concerned about the shape at this point because I can go and tweak that at will using the tools that these blinds has. I'm going to weld that together using the weld points command. I'm going to translate this out a little bit. And then I've got a point hanging down here in space. So I'm going to give that a home by again using the insert point command or insert insert edge. I'm going to split that. Go to my weld points. Select these two. 
And we're starting to pull this together. Nice logical flow through everything. T-splines really like squares. And any time that you can accomplish your model using squares, that's, that's ideal. So I've got two edges here. And to make my life a little easier, I'm going to insert another point here to here. And that'll allow me to blend this into there and this edge into here. So I'll use my extrude again because it's easy and I'm lazy. I'm going to extrude this down a little bit. I'm going to worry mostly about the center point because the end points will take care of themselves when I weld them. Pick this one to there. Where are you? Ah, there you are. Helps if I pick the command. Weld points again. First one, then the second one. Whichever one you pick first is the one that's going to move. And then the last thing I need to do is just fill in this hole right here. So I'm going to go back to my bridge command. I'm going to bridge from here to here. Straighten out the direction. Bridge here to here. Notice if you see a line crossing the center of your hole, that means you need to straighten out the direction. If you note, there's a point here and there's a point here. Click the other one and it fills it in. So again, if the patron saint of live demos is working for me, we'll get a nice smooth transition. Notice there's a little funkiness going on up here. And I'm going to straighten that out with the edit layout. If you right click the edit layout, there's a, there's a flyout underneath that says make uniform. I'm going to click that. And notice that it straightens out my topology up here and gives me a nice predictable layout. <clears throat> I'm going to go ahead and throw some symmetry on this so that we can work on it and see the whole thing happen at once. And notice that we have a really beautiful organic scoop. Let's see if I can show you that clearer. With very little effort. Now, notice there's a couple of little highlight puddles going on back here. And we want to fix those. So, I'm going to hit the A key, which is bring, going to bring up my vert. I'm going to turn this thing just so I can see where that puddle is. I'm going to translate this guy just a hair. Straighten that out. And notice that puddle's now gone and we have a nice beautiful translation through there. A few cool things that we can do to this if we want to make the air box, instead of being a direct intake, if it wants to be something where um, there, would be an, there would be an air cleaner or something sitting right here, I'd want to make a space for that. So I'm going to go back to my edges. I'm going to just drag this guy straight down. I'm going to grab this one and grab it straight back. I'm going to go underneath here. I'm going to pull this forward so that I get a nice intake shape there. And so now we've got the basic shape. If I look at this, it's all beautiful. It's blended in. I've added a little bit of height right here, but in this particular design, I'm not concerned with that because I'll just change the how the cowl blends into the back, but the rest of the surface has stayed put and should drop right back into where we started. Again, the designer dork and me can never leave well enough alone, so I'm going to mess with this just a hair. The other thing that's, a, that's fantastic about this tool is it allows you to variate and so when your boss comes in at 5 o'clock on a Friday and says he wants six more variations of this thing, 
for a meeting on Monday that will eventually be canceled, you can pull this off very quickly and go play PlayStation, which is what you want to be doing. Very simple, very easy. Let's throw a zebra on this. Hover over the command line. Select the object. Ooh, say it with me. Ooh, shiny. So let's turn this back into nerves. Convert, right click on the convert button, click your T-spline surface, Whew. nerves. I'm going to hide my heads up display at this point because I'm going to go back to using Rhino commands. So I'm going to hit the control space key, which will hide that. Go to the top, pick my original boundary, trim, bring up my model again. and join this back up, the original hood, and let's throw a naked edge display on here, and we have locked right back in to what our original surface was. things like that. So, how are we doing on time, Matt? I think we did, uh, I think we did two under 20. Great. I think that, yeah. was, I think that was the goal. <laughs> nice work. So, that's, uh, that wraps up my portion of it. Um, thanks for coming. Um, I hope, uh, hope that was helpful, and if there's any questions that I can, that I can answer you with, feel free to either contact me through the forum or, uh, uh, through uh, my website, which is theoutside.biz. My email is kyle at theoutside.biz. I'd be happy to answer any questions or help you out uh, any way I can. So I'll turn this back over to Matt and uh, let him take us home here. Okay, um, Kyle, just before uh, I, I, take I take it over, there's two questions that I think we'll just have you answer now, and then we can answer more questions from you at the end of the webinar. Great. Um, but uh, it looks like the questions that came in, um, is the display standard version 4 rendered, or is it the new version 5 display with reflection that you're using? Uh, that, that actually is the, uh, the Oxpecker plug-in, that, that red shader. Um, if you search the Rhino Wiki for Oxpecker, um, it's, uh, it was um, written by a user and um, it's just a little add-on that, that basically what it is is it's a cheat. It adds a reflection map and a shader color, um, but it's really effective for making, um, you know, automotive shapes. So um, I believe uh, the the guy is all over the forums under the name Hi Tolm, H Y T O L M, and uh, I believe he's he's somewhere in Asia uh, and wrote that plugin for Rhino. So if you do a search for Oxpecker, that that uh, will give you that um, that shader. Okay, and this, the second question, there's some more coming in, but we'll answer them at the end of the webinar, is what is the general general rule you use to rebuild the surface? Um, when it looks good. Um, I typically will rebuild something and, uh, and start going down the road and see if that's enough, um, uh, enough control points to get started with. Um, to be completely honest, I'll rebuild something and sometimes I'll rebuild it too much and so I'll go back and delete it and start over and sometimes it's not enough. You kind of have to play with it a little bit. Um, my personal preference is to kind of start with as few, you know, bits as you can without, you know, locking yourself into having to split the surface up a million times. So for something like that, you know, 8 by 8 for me seems to be uh, a nice starting point, but if I was doing something really small, you may have to go that had a ton of detail in it. You may have to rebuild higher for to start with. Okay.
Well, good. Thanks, Colin. We'll, we'll let you answer more questions at the end of the webinar.